みなさんこんにちはこんにちは私マークマリンです私グレイクテイラーですよろしくお願いします。This is Musings from Japan with Greg Taylor and Mark Marine. And this is number 55. 55. 55. 55. Yeah, double nickels is.、Uh, 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55. 55.
um, police officers, y- uh, young, um, I guess, well, they, they hadn't been police officers for very long, but they were killed when their car was swept away. Well, yeah. They were sent out on a, an evacuation mission, I believe, to, to help to tell people to evacuate or something like that. And then, right. then they, their car was swept away and uh, they, um, I don't know if they found them, their, their bodies, but they, I think they did find them. They did find them, but um, yeah, it was the car was upside down in a rice field somewhere. Yeah. The, the problem is that they're in one of these small subcompacts because the areas that they drive through are really narrow streets. So they're just going, yeah. Warning people get out, you know, it's not safe, you know, you know, evacuate now. And then they got swept away. So unfortunate. So anyway, but uh, let's just bring it back to positive things. So, so that's what we're doing here in Japan. So for you, you're preparing for work tomorrow. I'm sorry, Greg. Are you ready for work? Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. You're I, excited. I, I could tell. I could tell. Oh yeah. You, Greg, oh, by the way, you need a haircut, man. Your hair is getting out of control. Uh, no, it's not too bad. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I got my haircut at my family, uh, my favorite barber, uh, couple days before i came back to the united states yeah and and you know going to the barber i go to the barber uh it's interesting and i've been going to them for five six years maybe um and and a very long time probably seven years actually mm-hmm. but um they're about a 15 minute walk from the house and and uh they are very friendly uh you you make a reservation and you go in and, and you go to a vending machine you buy the tickets and then you give them your ticket and it it, it it's a very convenient way to to, to pay for the, the the haircut. There's no tipping because it's Japan, and J- Japan doesn't have tipping or gratuity. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know. that, yeah. That that's I always but, I always freak out when I have to go back and get a haircut in the states. What what a tip? Yeah, and, and uh, you know what do I tip them? What do I do? So, but at my barber, um, it's it's an opportunity for me to speak Japanese to them. And they tell me that I'm just about. They have an occasional foreigner, but not that many really. And and uh, uh, even though it's it's a large city, and and but if if they have a foreigner, they don't have Americans. So it's like a, well, Brazilian, a, right? Or, or Brazilian, or um, well, I don't know. The other Filipinos I, and uh, yeah, and yeah. mostly Asian, but but right. Brazilian because um, Aichi Prefecture has a well, it's it's the heart of the automobile industry for Japan, and uh, it 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 has uh, many employees from Brazil to to work in the, the auto manufacturing companies. I think I think I think Aichi Prefecture has the largest Brazilian population in Japan. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. I believe yeah. that's correct. Yeah. Um, which which so I get a chance to go see my barber, and it's 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 really they're nice people, and it yeah. and they great job um which reminds me uh you know we were talking earlier about the the typhoon well um japan had a couple of significant earthquakes this week uh yeah actually um we had a big one you know and 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 for all the people looking at uh some people did send me messages i'm i'm nowhere near where that earthquake was it was a very large one it was near kyushu which is in southern part of japan uh off of uh, miyazaki i believe is the area um very big earthquake in <clears throat> what they call the non nankai trough, nankai trough non- yeah nankai trough which was it's a major fault line which runs in the pacific side and it goes all the way towards where you're at greg it where it reaches the yes. land it, it, it reaches land in aichi and it goes through the middle of aichi through nagano up through niigata prefecture and it goes out the other side the nankai trough is Okay, we'll get into geology here. Is the point where the two parts of Honshu Island actually meet? The, the Japan was was Honshu, which is the main island of Japan, was actually two islands at one time. And many millions of years ago, they were fused together, and it's that trough, and that's the fault line. So, uh, if you have a major earthquake, I think the last this was a big earthquake, and the last one before that was the Kobe earthquake, which was an located on the Nankai trough as well, which was 19, what, 95, I believe. And yes, that killed on, on, exactly one. Well, it was uh, one year after the Northridge earthquake here in California. Right. 
Right. So yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So so well, that's the significant thing. You know, it was a seven point one um, earthquake in the, the uh, Kyushu area. But and, luckily, no. I mean, luckily, I don't want to say luckily. I mean, um, fortunately, what's I don't know the good adjective for this. In this case, the the areas uh, were not very populated. Areas that were hit were not very populated. It's kind of is similar to the Ishikawa earthquake, which hit at New Year's here in Japan which is on the Japan Sea side, which is on the other side of that Nankai trough, is on the Jap Japan Sea side of that trough. Oh, that was the Noto Peninsula. Right, uh, uh, Ishikawa. So, yes. And, and that, that earthquake, we felt it in Niigata, in our, or where I live in Shibata. I felt that same earthquake. So so that you can imagine... Spoiler alert. Um, spoiler alert. Go to a previous uh, Musings from Japan, and Mark and I talked in great detail about this and, and the damage that occurred in right. Niigata. Yeah, so so this is um, this is all connected, and they actually, the big thing here in Japan is they put out a warning. Uh, and now Shinkansens that run along the, the Japan, uh, along the Pacific side, down to the Chigoku, which is the uh, the southern part of Japan, Hyogo, Okayama, Hiroshima Prefecture, down to Kyushu, those Shinkansens will now run slower. They're not, and they're keeping people away from the beaches uh, down in Miyazaki and southern Kyushu along the uh, Pacific side because they're afraid of aftershocks. And that's what happened yesterday, I, think, I believe, here. There was a major aftershock in that area. And they're worried about tsunamis and the the what what do you call the 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 tidal pool the whirlpools that that the that that happen in the sea. So they don't want people to go to the beaches. So a lot of beaches are closed. And we're in the middle of summer vacation here. The beach is very popular, but they close the beaches because they don't want people swimming. And if there's an earthquake, they're going to get sucked into the water. And there's no way we can help them. So right now they're taking precautions because. Major earthquakes in Japan happen, but we also have numerous aftershocks. The New Year's oh. earth, New Year's earthquake, we had twenty or thirty major aftershocks, and they've already had four or five down in uh, Kyushu. So, uh, so they already they they had the earth the, the big earthquake off of Kyushu, and then then Tokyo had its own earthquake. I don't know if it was associated yes. with the Nankai trough, but Tokyo had no. a, a a significant earthquake that was smaller. But it was noticeably felt in the Tokyo area. Yeah, Kana, Kanagawa, I believe, or Kana, Kanagawa, Kanagawa and, area. And then, then the um, the result of this larger earthquake in Kyushu um, created this run on um, products and daily use products in IT yeah. prefecture. For example, during Water. the pandemic, um, but th th there was a worldwide run on basic food items and and um, home home necessities uh such as bathroom tissue um water or, or as we call it here toilet paper yes <laughs> and, and the ironic thing is um there in japan during the pandemic there was never a real, real problem with shortage because what happens is there's uh, between tokyo and and nagoya um i forget probably in shizuoka or somewhere there's a a, a, a large paper or tissue manufacturing um mill a mill yeah mill oh uh, yes mill and and so there's more than enough paper to go around and yeah. they have more than enough supplies that are coming in recycling so that they can make the paper so there was no never a, a, a problem it was just psychological and and japanese tend to do this and i think it tends to be, be because japan's an isolated island nation and uh you know, people looking for for sustaining, you know, self sufficiency, um, and making sure that they have enough of what they need. When when really there's no problem. It's just it's just uh, 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 something that when like this major thing erupts, you know, like the pandemic or or like there's a, a major earthquake with the first ever prediction that there might be a larger quake from the right. night type off. Right. And and, and so yeah. my wife my yeah. wife is looking for for water. Um, there's water not to be found, bottled water not to be found anywhere, really. 
and in, uh, in your in in that area, but here in, in Okazaki, I, I, where we we live, so it's in in yeah. see it's a it's a very regional thing, and the Japan is guilty of this a lot. It's it's actually what what we call those of us who live on the Japan sea side. It's the Pacific syndrome, Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, Kobe, Hiroshima, all these major cities along the Pacific side when they have an earthquake or something like this happen that kind of panic buying happens in those big cities because you know they think oh we're not going to have them you know then they panic buy but here on this side of japan something like that happens they go okay okay even the ishikawa earthquake which happened here on the sea of japan side we didn't panic and go out and buy tissue toilet paper or water like that no nobody did that here on our side of Japan, we're less populated, but people have a more of a a, a calm, calmer approach to it than the big city people. And and the big city people, you know, tend to panic. And in you see it in California. I remember this happening in California during the earthquake in uh, San Francisco when I was living in Hollister. You know, uh, you know, we were out of power and water and gas. You know, for you know a few days, and I remember you know, living out of an ice chest and, you know, and battery operated a little TV radio <laughs> to get information in Hollister. But I mean, going down to the local, you know, Safeway or trying to buy food. I mean, there were huge lines, cars backed up, just trying to get water and toilet paper and things like that. And, and it was just, it was panic buying, you know, and, and I think if people prepare ahead of time, you know, and, you know, I mean, in my place, I got I got extra water. I've got extra toilet paper. I mean, you know, I've got lots of stuff. I don't need to go out and buy all that kind of stuff. And you probably your wife really doesn't need to do that either. But it's just water. She does. Water, uh, we probably water, water. Yeah, but pretty quickly in the house. Um, probably should keep a little bit more water on hand. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and but you should think if you think about it ahead of time, it should be okay. So, how about for Japan in in, in disaster preparedness? Do they have uh, the bosai goods? Do people in their houses have the disaster kits ready to prepare for? Uh, yeah, a yeah, yeah. And actually, and I'm not sure about the again the Pacific side, but even the colleges that I teach at or are or, or taught at before, um, we prepare kits. For the students when they enroll into the college since a lot of students come from different cities and stuff they they live in apartments or dormitories so they have uh safety kits that, that you know i just call them preparedness kits that they include um toothpaste and toiletries that you might need uh simple uh poncho or rain jacket or something you know that kind of stuff and they come in a little pack and they're they we give it to them it's theirs and then usually the department the the schools themselves and the the dormitories and all that have extra water extra supplies we have rooms where that that's kept in fact in my office uh we have an area where we keep extra water and uh toilet paper, uh, also uh, batteries. Uh, we have a supply of batteries and, and uh, rechargeable batteries that we keep online, uh, plugged in. So if something happens, we just unplug and we have power. So, you know, the schools and and our, our students, we take care of them. And most of the, in our area, Niigata, they do that for people. And in, in People that I know have some sort of preparedness kit, but Niigata's had major earthquakes. You know, this area has been hit, so people have learned from that. Uh, Six, well, earthquake. 64, but the Chuetsu earthquakes, which were yeah. in the 90s and the early 2000s, we've had, you know, since I've been here, there's been six major earthquakes in this area, you know, from, from Yamagata down to Niigata to Toyama and Ishikawa, you know, that affects all of us, so... So six major earthquakes and people are prepared here at least, you know, so, you know, anyway. So what's what, you know, um, I wanted to, to, to go off in a different direction right good, now. Good. Yeah. The earthquake's it, done. I cut. So during mid, mid July, it was great to see you, Mark. Oh yeah. It was, it was great to have you come visit your home here in Niigata. Yeah, for the first time since December 2017. Um, I moved away from Niigata in uh, 
and you got the prefecture in in March of 2017. And then then in December of 2017, I came back for a, a, a Christmas visit. Right. And it was great to, to be there. But then my family and I visited Niigata for the first time since that time. Uh, we visited in, in mid-July, and it was fantastic to see the city. Um, it was in, um, and, and many friends mm. that I didn't plan on um, make the plans to go see, but it just it just fell into that just I was happened. able to meet some 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 good friends and that I left in Niigata, and they're still there, and, and it's it was great. Um, it was great to see the Rise Up Jazz Band, which I played in and and for for three years or so. Um, it was really a great memory making event to, to go see Niigata and, and also to check out the, the the new completely reformed station, which is still still undergoing its reformation. But um, what a fantastic but, city! Yeah, you went inside, you saw the whole thing. You, you it, yeah, Niigata is really modernized since you left. Yeah, um, it was quite quite amazing. Um, I. I didn't get a chance to go walk around Futamachi, Old Town, but um, I think we did drive through it. We drove through it briefly. Yes, uh, in, in your car, yeah. I believe. Yeah, I took and, you took and, you and your daughter around. Yeah, it was just a great a great time to to and it was. I I just can't say enough good things about being in Niigata and, and actually going to Shibata and and where I used to live. And uh, um, and you took the train, taking the I took the train, <laughs> and you did the taking in the Sasaki curve, the Sasaki <laughs> curve, yeah. <laughs> so uh, a legacy from my my life in Niigata, and and, and I got to, oh, and I renewed my driver's license in Japan. Um, before I came to Niigata, I, right when I got to Japan, I renewed my driver's license. Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah. Everyone, you know, uh, I should to mention this. Uh, Greg got his driver's license renewed in Japan, and he bypassed all the laws to do it. It's amazing, Greg. You're you're really well. That's okay. You're we're talking to our American friends. You know, that's amazing, amazing. Greg's wife is what? Well, you know, he always comes back, and he needs a he needs a license. They said, oh, okay, okay. Here, here you go. Here, here's your license. It's like what? well, I came back for that reason. <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, I know. It's amazing, amazing. So, and that was a three year or five year. Five year. It's a good five, five year. It's my first five year license that I received. I got my driver's license in February two thousand seventeen. Seventeen, yeah. When yeah, you left here, that's a month the... before I moved away. Yeah, it was. Um, it, it all worked into place. I worked really hard to get it, and and uh, there it is. I I have my license, and and I'm good for five years of driving in Japan. So so for so everyone out there that really Greg is now has. Now, finally, I think after these many years of coming back from America to Japan and back and forth, has now become a real international citizen because you go back to America, you work, you have your life there, and you come back to Japan, and boom, you got license, you've got a place to live, you have a family, you've got Friends. everything. Friends, you've got the barber shop. I mean, you've got everything. I mean, that's 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 what it is, you know. Because when I go back to America, I'm I'm a, I'm a foreigner now. You, know, so. you really are in a way, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm you out of American, it. but but you, your all your um, documentation that you use is. I mean, you have your American passport, but it's it's other than that. Other than that, I'm Japanese. You yeah, are, completely, you, know. And, you like, know, just just you're Japanese, except without the citizenship. Like, yep. <laughs> so. So, and I you know, and I'm not going to uh, just for those of you out there. I'm not going to change my kokseki. I'm not going to become Japanese. Uh, there's no ad, there is no advantage. The only advantage that I would get by becoming Japanese would be I could vote in Japan. That's it. I've got every single privilege and honor and benefit of being Japanese, except voting right now. So, and plus the United States charges you like $2,000 to give up American citizenship. It's the only country in the world that charges you to get rid of your citizenship. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so anyway, anyway. <laughs> anyway it, was, it was just great to, to visit Japan. And, yeah. and, and I, was, I was thinking um, and visit Niigata hmm. um, and just relax day after day at, at home. 
in yeah. IG. And and I was um I was thinking I actually spend 20% of my year. I mean, this year all in 20% of my year in Japan. Yeah. 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 See, that's cool. And soon as soon as soon as you get ready to retire and in and, and settle, you're gonna spend it'll be it'll flip. You'll spend 80% of your time in Japan and they do 20% in America. Because you'll visit your 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 yeah. friends and your brother and, and whatnot, but maybe. <laughs> or maybe they'll come to see you. I don't know. <laughs> you know. You know, for me, and when I go back, it's just to see my family, and that's you know maybe the occasional business trip. But you know, I don't get a big chance to go back to the states to see people like you, and I don't go back to work, obviously. So, uh, you know, it's a big difference, though. So I miss. Uh, I, I I do miss the. You know, I I'm looking forward to going back to Japan permanently, and I I miss the. Uh, um, I miss this the, the quality of life in Japan and mm -hmm. the the. the the, to me, it's not stressful, and it, it, it's only stressful when you're working. But um, mm -hmm. if I'm not working, it's a very peaceful, relaxed kind of life. Yeah, for me, I mean, and it's different because I, when I came to Japan, I established myself a lot long, a long time ago, over thirty years ago. I came here, and uh, and I'm going to retire here, and and my life has been very stable very my my job situation is so comfortable it's really nice for me you know but but i but i invested 30 years ago i invested my whole being to try to make it here in japan and and i would say the first 5 years was 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 hard but after that since then for the last 25 or 6 years man this has been been a great ride greg for me so, you know, so, but what I want for you is when you get here back to Japan after you're finished working in, you know, you come to Japan to live, that, that then, then we can get together and we can go sit in a cafe and do amusings from Japan from a cafe. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, we, when, when Facebook, for example, when Facebook first came out with, um, what was it, the live streaming, mm -hmm. we did that. From, we did that. From, we from Eon Mall. We did that from Ian Ball and Shibata. That That's right. Yeah, that was a great memory. We we both had our. That was the early form of musings from Japan. That was the that was like a the the predecessor of musings from Japan. I exactly. Believe. Yeah, that was our oh, our first foray was, into uh, this. Avenue. It was a good memory, and it was uh, um, I think during the, the winter holiday season, I believe. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, we were, we were up there shopping, and we just hung out in the food court and. <laughs> and to put it on my phone. I remember my phone getting hot. <laughs> yeah, and and I use my phone, and then you use your phone, and right. and somehow we we made some it, live videos that, that it, uh, it worked out. So it was a great experience. So, so. Well, anyway, but we're we're running short on time here, so I want to say, Greg. So good luck on the school year, and I hope that everything comes out well for you, and uh, there'll be no problems with everything. And are you you're ready to go, right? Ready to go. And I, I say thank you to our audience and for, for being loyal supporters. I get messages all the time. Um, I got a message recently that, that said they look forward to every Musings from Japan that comes out. And now we're finishing up number 55. And uh, and I'll, I'll process this and churn it out today because, you know, since we mentioned the date in here, I better throw it out quickly. <laughs> anyway. All right, Greggy, so we're going to wrap it up. So thank you so much, everyone. This is Musing from Japan and number 50, 55. Yeah, 55. Am amazing, amazing, Greg, amazing. So I'm going to get a haircut today. I think you should get a haircut, Greg. You know, because it's, it looks, okay. like, it looks like you're getting an afro there, man. It's getting bad. Yeah, look at, look that's at, not that long. Oh, I know. I know. Anyway, so thank you very much, man, everyone. Skari sama deshita, Greg. Skari sama deshita. So, Minasan, as we always say, sayonara. Sayonara.